Hey guys, JH, welcome to Practice Tea. Okay, we're getting very close to a final uh, channel lock, guys. Finished product. Okay, today, now you're going to see something today that you don't normally see from JH. And that is, I'm going to power up channel lock now. We're going to get what we call in the power channel. We're really going to get into the power channel. And all I've been trying to do to date is, is perfect the principles of channel lock and its mechanics and its protocol. And now we're going to add, we built the engine, now we're going to put the turbocharger on it. Now there's just one other thing that we can, that I, that I want to to give you as a tip and a bit of an atomic particle. We, we've already now determined that we want to fire here and fire into that trail axis and fire down there and fire away. Now what will help you guys is that if you can get the mental image that after we back cocked and we've five o'clock nosed ourselves, when we're coming down if we can fire the club that way in the channel, bang, we can actually fire it really, really, you know, bang back here. Okay, we're going to finish here, but we don't want to start firing it that way early. We want to start firing it that way. So if you can actually feel that your channel lock is going to go here, that'll really get you beside the body. We'll finish up ultimately here, but my intention is to fire it back here. So you've got, you've got to feel like you're really firing that club behind the body line, over here. Now watch how hard I hit this, guys. I mean, it's a miserable day here on the JH practice. I'm the only person here. And it looks like it might rain and it's really windy and brutal to hit into and there's no sun so I'll probably look like I'm I'm in shadow land but how do we how do we power up channel lock okay we've been looking for the mechanism we've just been very passive with everything else well from now on what we're going to do is we're going to increase the travel of the golf club now how do we do that guys well for JH because I'm an old dude 76 next week um, old dude, I'm not very flexible. Now Mr. X is very flexible and one of the guys on the channel said you know Mr. X has got a really long swing and it's much longer than mine. Well he's much more flexible than me and he's probably you know 40 years younger or 35 years younger. But I can turn more than I normally do. I've been trying to perfect channel lock to date. Just check our audio. Yep. Uh, so what we're going to do, and how am I? How am I going to to power up channel lock? Okay. For JH, I've got to get more club travel. Now how do I? Now if I take the club here and I don't move my hips very much, that's about where my club normally goes. But if I get in here and I think that this whole trail side wants to go around here and go that way in the backswing here, see how much I've turned my rump around here and how much has pulled that lead leg across. That's what I want to feel. I want to feel like a corkscrew or an auger going that way on the backswing. I've been very stationary to date with channel lock because I've been trying to perfect you know, the, 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 the path of the swing and the mechanics of the swing. But now we want to power it up. So now we have to coil up more and we've got to get that club to travel a bit more. Now I did a couple of shots yesterday. I haven't hit any today, but before I left, and man, I was, I was getting so much hang time on the golf club. I couldn't believe it on the ball. It was just thundering. So with the wind is coming straight here, guys, across there. So I'll whip some up. There's a tree up. This is a five iron tree up there at about, from here about, into the wind about 185 yards. And, you know, you wouldn't get there riding um, a winged horse in this weather here. From here to that tree now is probably a full full hybrid and some because it's, it's playing 50, 40 yards longer. But I'll hit this five iron up there at that tree 
And what, what I've noticed yesterday when I was hitting from here, that tree is about probably, you know, probably 50 feet high. This five iron was like 30 feet above it. It was like 80 feet up. Just unbelievable the height I'm getting because I'm getting more club head speed. All right, so we're going to power up channel lock and we're going to fire the club, what we think is behind us here, which will force that weight down to that trail leg again. Okay, haven't hit a shot, guys, dead cold. This is what I like about channel lock. We can come here, be dead cold. Now I'm going to, I'm going to really sit into that trail knee and really get that hip turning. Oh, guys, look at that. And look at this, I'm just sitting down here. Whew. Just sitting down there. As Mo Norman would say, stay seated for the performance. How many times did you say that to me? Stay seated for the performance. He said, everybody else wants to get up before the last act is played in a normal golf swing. They all do that. Mo didn't. Mo was here. Guys, that was in the air so long. And I'm firing the club back here, guys. Now, when I fire it back here, that actually forces the weight down that trail, that trail axis, which is, which is what we're trying to do. And we're really we're firing it here. Firing it out to the ball, guys. Remember that. So watch how much I turn that, that, that um, sit into that trail knee and turn that hip. Okay, got the right foot up there a little bit. But you know why, guys? Because that club has so much velocity on it. More than I normally get. And it really just... Really just... Whew. I'll turn around a little bit. This way. There's now a bounce fence up here and that just went straight over it. I just didn't even think I could get to it with the weather. And here we are. Back cock. Just a little bit of trail foot up. Just a little bit. But I'm, I'm stiff, that's only the second shot I've hit. So my hips are quite tight. That's why it's difficult for me to keep the foot down. Come on, Jage. That's a better job. A much better job. Ooh, much better job. Come on, Jase. Look at that, guys. That's perfect. See, I get this. I get that blocker action. When I hit a good, I get here. That arm never gets over here. I mean, that really is um, a very, very strong golf shot. Sit into that trail thing, just turn that, that hip, turn the whole body. That's, huh, that's fantastic. Okay, gonna come I'm loosened up a little bit now. Sit into that trail knee and really turn that 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 trail rump behind me. Now for a very cold swing that's pretty good. Pretty good. I'm hitting back here, guys. There it is, that's the one. Just a little bit of elevation of that trail foot. But that's happening because I've got so much more velocity in my golf swing right now. And I've got to counter that velocity with more pressure down in the trail heel because the club's got more speed. 
a lot more speed. I'm, I'm absolutely a club, at least a club longer. That's how I want to hit it, guys. That's how I want to be. See those knees of flex there? Don't have a lot of rotation through the ball. And you can't have a lot of rotation if that trail hip is down. The trail foot is down because it won't let this hip come forward. You watch the difference if I let that trail foot go with a conventional swing, how much trail side I get around in a conventional golf swing when I release the trail side. Look at that. I mean, that's a very conventional golf swing, and that's it's a beautiful shot. But that shot has a big potential to go left. You've only got to get that trail side going a little early, and the ball is left. I mean, that's perfectly straight. But the, what I wanted to show you there is that how much that, that trail side releases. Watch again, compared to, to channel lock, this conventional golf swing. trail hip is right up here. Now that's a conventional golf swing. But we don't have any of that. Because we have isolation of the of the trail axis with this whole right side of the body for a right handed person. We have all that isolated so the arm just fires away from that isolated body componentry. That's, that's, that's the story, that's the explanation of why there is very little uh, rotation in the body guys because this is stabilized and the arm is firing away from it and not going with it as it does in a conventional golf swing here we go sit into that and turn that those hips jh here we are guys look at that talk about seated for the performance yeah looks a lot different to a normal golf swing doesn't it but that ball flight is a lot more consistent than a normal golf golf swing really I'll just show you the difference I mean that that, that the wind is really coming across hard here I'll try and hit the ball at that tree with a conventional golf swing with a normal trail side release and we'll just see what the ball does I'll I'll, I'll give you a running commentary on the ball flight Just a big high, sort of, you know, it's not a sling draw, but just a big high power draw. But it always, you, you, when you hit it, you think, well, there's always a chance it can go left, you can overdraw the ball. Well, you can't overdraw the ball with channel lock. Okay, does that swing feel more freer than channel lock? You bet your life. Absolutely. Channel lock feels a very inhibited golf swing. But that's a feeling that will dissipate with repetitions. Oh, absolutely, it feels very stilted and, uh, and different. Okay, sit into that JH and really turn that buttock. Look at that, guys. See here, I'm still getting here. I get the butt of the club like this, which means it hasn't done that. Still in line with that forearm. Very much like Steve Elkington used to look. I mean, Steve always had this look about him. Club was always in line there. And I guess Hogan to a great degree as well, because Hogan always finished like this, didn't he? Very much so. As I've said many times, guys, the only resemblance I have to Hogan is the Hulk Hogan or the Paul Hogan not the bend type okay we're going to be firing the club here try and fire it behind us and we're really going to try and power it up okay see if i can get to that tree it's not on but we'll try oh when i said it's not on
Guys, they got to within about five yards of that tree. It's five iron. That's really into that wind. That's every bit of a bit of a three iron to that tree. But but I got within about five yards of it because I, I'm powering up the swing. Okay, does, what does it feel like? It feels ungainly. Feels like this. Whoa, that's what it feels like. And it's off-putting because it really feels like I'm going to topple over. But you just uh, become accustomed. Okay, we're really going to fire it in the channel behind us here. There it is, guys. Okay, the foot just lifted a bit, but eminently acceptable. And that's only happening because I'm, I'm not used to this extra velocity of the little bit of extra turn. I can feel it because I can feel my left shoulder across here more than it normally is. So I mean I know it's there. It's great that it's not raining. But it's very overcast. Okay, we're gonna fire here. Sit into that trail leg and really get that rump and really fire the club here and trail heel down. There it is guys, that's the piece de resistance. Look at this, look, look, look. And look at these knees. Hips are still basically facing forward. Knees have shuttled and collapsed a little bit. Shoulders are still essentially facing over there. So what does that say? What does that tell you? That tells you that the shoulders have, remained, have maintained themselves closed and the arm has fired away independently of the shoulders. The arm hasn't gone with a rotating body. It's gone away, adjacent to the chest and the shoulders. That's a very good uh, explanation of what was going on there. And as I said the other day, after, after the... Uh, uh, the sidetrack I got uh, poor Billy Phillips going down when I didn't give enough information about um, you know how to keep the the the, the trail um, uh, foot on the ground and that trail axis supported. You know, look, I, I never told Bill all the, the intricacies of it, and this is what you have to do when you're explaining something. You can't expect anybody to learn, even someone who who has such a comprehensive knowledge of the golf swing per se, as, as Billy Phillips does, you can't, you can't sort of think that he knows what I'm thinking and feeling. You have to explain to him and to everybody else what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling, what my feelings are and what they represent in terms of a look and a verbal explanation of that feel. So what is it for me? Well, I feel this. I feel I sit really down into this trail leg now, rump is sticking here. I feel as I go back that, that, that trail knee maintains its, its flex and my, my trail hip really goes this way. And look how it pulls this across. It may not be doing that as much in the actual golf swing, but I want it to. Because that has to get pulled across as a resultant. That, 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 that knee has to get pulled across. If I keep that flex and I turn that trail but Now what's happening here, as I'm turning that trail buttock so much, and that trail hip that it's it's turning that foot out because of the torque on my leg it's talking my leg like that and that's one of the things I hate about rubber spikes guys they just particularly when the grass is long like this they just and it's wet they just glide across the top of the the ground when you put torque on them and that's why Hogan had the extra spikes in his uh, his golf shoes and he had really long spikes but he had that extra one in there I don't like uh, I like rubber spikes for walking and the comfort of them but I don't like them if you're going to talk up a golf swing. So that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling I'm sitting into that trail, that trail leg. I feel like this is across here. I feel like I want to turn that buttock and I want to feel like I'm looking over there guys. I feel like I'm here. Then I want to fire the club here. Almost behind me. It'll get out to the ball but feel like you're firing it over here. I bet you can't fire it into the ground as much as you think you're going to fire it into the ground there. The more you think you're going to fire it into the ground there, the better contact you'll make. Try that. 
So here we are. I'm going to sit into that trail. I've got precock, I've got five o'clock nose, and I'm going to really stay in it. There it is, guys. Okay, I've got my hips, my shoulders have turned over here. They have turned over here. But my hips haven't. My hips haven't. Well, we'll just go through the whole process. Set it up off the trail foot. Yeah, get your alignment, whatever it is. Then we're going to back cock in here. As we back cock, we sit into that trail knee. Five o'clock nose. And all we're going to do is turn into that, that trail hip as much as we can. Let that lead side be, be, be subservient. And, and just stay in that, that trail axis. That's good. I'm really getting the feeling of that uh, that uh, trail uh, foot down now, guys. And for anybody that doesn't have a lot of, you know, hip mobility and, you know, like plenty of range of motion in their hip flexors, and as you get older, even young guys, some young guys are not flexible people. And if you don't have that 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 uh, flexibility in your hip 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 extensors, um, not wanting to 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 force your hips to do anything on the downswing could be a, could be a real bonus for most people. No no doubt about that. All right, here we go. This is I'll try and play a shot in, in shot time. Here. Just underturned that a little bit. Just didn't take it back as far as I needed to. There it is. Dead straight. I could do a better job. I'm not turning back as far uh, with the hips as I did yesterday. But I, you know, I was. It was late in the day, and I was quite, quite supple and, um, you know, and quite free. This this crabgrass, this Australian crabgrass, guys, is like barbed wire. Oh. But I like to come over here because I don't get disturbed. When I'm on the range, you know, you've, you've got the salubrious conditions, nice grass and everything. But there are people coming and going and it's amazing how many people come up and <laughs> start talking to you when you're doing a video. Okay, so here we go. Come on, Jay, do a really good job here. Oh, that's a good job, James. That's a really good job. Got the foot down now, guys. Got the foot down now. That's a good job. It's a very good job. Sit in the trial foot. Starting to feel a little bit more natural. B 
big throwaway, which is good. Last shot. Do a good one, James. Really turn. There it is, guy. What a good one to finish with. What a good one to finish with. Okay, guys, we're getting close. We're probably 90% of the way there to a finished protocol. Just hit one this way. That's where I am, guys. Look at this here. Just a good shot. Okay, guys, just a little bit more info. Uh, just reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. I'm still learning it. I'm still learning the protocol myself. Um, yeah, okay guys, we'll do more tomorrow.